Winky face. Look at that. It's a feels bad. It's a feels bad. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Stylosa, and in this video, we are going to break down how to find the correct role and hero for you to play. This video is also sponsored by Blizzard, so thanks guys for giving me the opportunity to put this together. Now, Overwatch is an incredibly complex game. There are tons of heroes, tons of different roles, but in this video, I will break all of this down and give you some awesome advice on how to win more games and be a more effective teammate. So we're going to begin with looking at the tank heroes. We'll move into the damage and then we'll go into support. So let's do this and let's break everything down. Heroes are broke into three distinct categories. We have tanks, damage and support. However, in this video, we're going to go a little bit deeper and I'm going to explain to you guys some of the community identified roles and break them down. Firstly, let's begin with the tank heroes. Now, there are a few distinct types of tanks. The first ones I want to talk about are the main tanks. We are looking at footage here of Reinhardt. Main tanks, what they do is they control space. They lead from the front. So if you are a type of player that likes to be in the thick of the action, leading the team, main tanks are definitely the heroes that you guys want to look at. We've also got Orisa. Again, you will notice there is a theme with the main tanks. They have barriers. Barriers absorb a lot of damage. They allow your team to take and control space, which is what tanking, especially main tanking, is all about. And then we've got Winston, a little bit of a special main tank. He's a dive main tank, but we'll get onto that in a second. But again, main tanks have high health pools. They can take a ton of damage. They control space. They enable the team. So let's talk about off tanks. These are a special category of tanks within Overwatch. This is Roadhog. Now, Roadhog is fairly unique in the tank category in that he is more damage focused than actual tank focused. Yes, he can take a lot of damage and he can heal himself, but he is all about punishing people out of position with his hook and supplementing the damage output of the team. Let's take a look at Wrecking Ball. He's a dive tank, but a very special dive tank. Wrecking Ball is highly mobile and he really excels at isolating targets in the back line and pumping loads of damage in them and destroying them. He's a super fun hero to play. Let's move on to Zarya. Zarya has high damage output, but also she's capable of protecting her teammates from taking damage. In fact, she can make them immune to damage, which is mega strong. This means she synergizes super well with other main tanks, especially Reinhardt. Let's take a look at Sigma. Now, what makes Sigma funky in the off tank category is he's got a barrier, but this barrier is very unique. It's actually a projected barrier. He can throw this barrier all over the place, which makes it super strong. But of course, the trade-off for this is it doesn't absorb loads of damage. Let's move on to D.Va. Now, D.Va is a dive off tank. Again, off tanks that are categorized as dive tanks typically have high mobility. Look at Wrecking Ball, look at D.Va, and then look in the main tank category at Winston. Now, D.Va is highly mobile. She's got a fantastic defensive ability in Defense Matrix, which prevents projectiles hitting your team. So how do you make the right selection for the tank to play? Now, generally, you always want a main tank on the team. You can actually make it work with two off tanks, but typically you want a main tank. So either a Winston, a Rissa, or a Reinhardt, and then the off tank can select around those roles. For example, you would take a Zarya if you've got a Reinhardt, or even a Zarya if you've got a Winston, because the bubble can be quite strong as you bubble Winston as he dives in. However, if you've got Winston as the main tank, he's a dive tank, Consider taking a dive off tank like D.Va, who can actually go in with Winston as he closes distance on the enemy. If you want to lead from the front, play a main tank. If you want to take control of the fight with ability usage and support in the front line and the back line, consider playing an off tank. And finally, if you want to do damage, but also have a lot of sustainability, then maybe look at Roadhog or even a Zarya. Damage in Overwatch has three very distinct categories. Now, the first category we're going to go into detail on is hit scan. These are heroes that do tons of damage and the damage happens as soon as you pull the trigger. So you've got snipers like Widowmaker in this category. You've got pure hit scan DPS like your Soldier 76. You've got your McCree. You've got your Ash. These heroes are all about sustained high damage output. The focus here is on aim. If you've got really, really good mechanical aim or you're really interested in becoming super good at aiming, these are the heroes that you should be looking to play. 
The next category we're going to look at is projectile. Now, typically projectile heroes have more sort of ability focused play rather than straight up aim. You'll notice this is Farah that I'm playing. She excels at well flying and she does a ton of damage in AOE or area of effect when her rockets detonate. She's incredibly powerful, but also she's pretty good at flanking as well, which moves us on to our final category. These are the flankers. These are heroes that are constantly on the enemy's back line. It is your Tracer. It is your Doomfist. It is your Genji. You get out there, you harass the enemy, and you try and disrupt their back line, taking out their critical key support. Okay, let's take a look at some examples here of me playing Soldier 76. Now, we are on defense on Route 66, and Soldier is particularly pretty good on this point. Again, this goes back to the whole idea of certain heroes being really good on certain maps. But there are a few rules of thumb you can actually follow. Soldier is a hit scan hero, so what we're looking to do is maintain control of the high ground and give us a very good line of sight to pour damage into the enemy team. And that's exactly what we're doing, and it's working great. Now, the enemy have a tracer player. So what we need to be aware of here is, are we actually playing the strongest hero right now to get maximum value from this situation? Well, Soldier's okay, and he's going to do pretty well, but there are a few things that I'm already making in my head when it comes to decisions. Namely, I know they've got a tracer, and I know that my pick is not that strong against the tracer. So when I get killed, I am now looking to swap my hero out to a DPS that will counter Tracer, and I've decided to go for McCree. Now, this is because McCree has got Flashbang, which is a great ability for controlling Tracer if she gets close to you, and McCree is just pretty good at dueling if you can land the shot. That is an example of making a positive change to a hero that counters an enemy hero that is playing super well. For DPS counters, think about what the enemy team are doing, what heroes are playing well, and what selection you can make to counter what they are doing. So a few very quick fire examples of this would be if the enemy has a very strong Farah, maybe even a pharmacy combo with Farah and Mercy, then consider playing Ash, Widow, McCree or 76 to counter what they're doing. Select hit scan to deal with the Farah. Or what about the enemy tanks? Are they playing super well? Maybe consider swapping to Reaper. Maybe you're playing Echo into double hit scan on the enemy team. Not a great idea. Maybe consider swapping to a flanker so you can actually try and harass their snipers in the back line. So let's move on to the support category. Now, this is super funky because it's not as cut and dry as, yeah, these guys are all heroes that heal and keep the team alive because that's not the case. So we're firstly going to talk about what is known as flex supports. Now, this term is going to be used a little bit loosely here, but what I mean by this is a support hero that is not primarily focused on healing. Now, Zenyatta is the quintessential example of this because he outputs an incredible amount of damage. He's got an ability called Discord Orb, which means that enemy targets with Discord on them take increased damage. And also, he does a lot of damage himself. So he's very unique in the support category. Now, there's a bunch of other heroes like Lucio that do all kinds of different things, like give you speed boosts and all of that good stuff, instead of primarily focusing on healing. So let's talk about main supports because the golden rule of supports in Overwatch is you always, 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 always say this after me, always, always need one main support on your team. Now, a main support is concerned with massive, and I mean massive, healing output. If you do not have a main support, your team will find it incredibly difficult to win any kind of team fight because you won't have the healing available. Main support heroes include Mercy, Anna, Batiste, and Moira. Your main tanks, they need a main support to keep them alive. If you do not have this, then you won't be able to keep them alive. So in this example here, we've got me playing Anna. Anna is a main support. She does loads of healing. This means I can keep the main front line of the team alive and also heal everybody else if they need massive burst healing. You always need, guys, a main support on your team. All right, then, let's take a look at an example of me playing Moira. Now, Moira is another main support, but she's different when compared to Anna. Anna is more focused at long-range healing and also a ton of burst healing, but Moira is focused on a lot of area of effect healing on the point. So what has happened here is originally I was playing Zenyatta in this game. The problem is the enemy team have got a team comp 
which works really well against Zen. Zen isn't very survivable on his own, and the enemy have got a Sombra, who pretty much counters Zen. They've also got a Winston. Yeah, it's going to be bad times playing Zen Yata. So, what I've decided to do is swap off onto a Moira. This is because I know we need a lot of healing on the point. This is Bolt Sky Industries. It's an assault map. I want to keep loads of healing output on the point as the fight breaks out, and Moira is also very survivable because she's got an ability which allows her to fade away from damage, which is super strong. So thank you for watching this video, guys. We could go into massive detail on each individual role and also each individual map and team comps and meta and all of that stuff, but I'm going to save that for a different video. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember, you can follow me on everything, which is at Stylosa on Twitter and on Instagram, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Doodaloo.